Through the last couple of episodes, we demonstrated a few ways you can use people code to generate JSON. And this series has prompted some, shall we say, spirited and interesting discussions. Uh, for example, our first episode covered the JSON generator object, which subscribers rightly noted is a bit quirky at best and sometimes, well, downright wrong at worst. The next episode covered the JSON.org objects, which are now part of people tools and readily available. And hey, for that matter, the JSON.org Java objects can probably be used with people tools releases all the way back to 842, but they aren't native. So there is a bit of a performance impact as the system marshals data between people code and the JVM. But seriously, does that matter? Actually, it can. It depends on how much data you are moving. As JSON is primarily an in-memory DOM document rather than, say, the alternative which might be streamed events. In this episode, we continue our JSON people code discussion focusing on the people code native JSON object and JSON array. These objects are similar to their Java counterparts, but with some interesting twists. And We'll stick with that same target JSON structure for an apples to apples comparison. So just a quick refresher. Here's the JSON that we want to generate. And here is the pretty printed version. And this scenario comes from an OTN forum discussion. And now let's return to our app engine test harness. So what I'm gonna do here is add another step and action. And let's name this one, I don't know, how about JSON object? I suppose JSON object, I suppose maybe native might be another good term for that. Uh, let's see, let's save this and here's what I want to do. I want to start with the people code from our Java episode. And let's use that as a starting point for this one with the, the JSON native objects. That'll give us an idea of what are the differences between the two? Uh, uh, how similar are they? So starting here at the top, I see that uh, the selection criteria, yeah, I definitely want to keep that. But then in place of Java object, I want to use JSON object. And this one here, this one is going to be JSON array. And then our factory functions, this will be create JSON array. And this one will be create JSON object. The factory functions don't require any parameters, so we'll delete the parameters here. Let's see, going down to the put methods. Now, uh, the native definitions use a variety of different methods, not just one put with an overloaded put such as what's used with Java. So here, let's clear this so that we can use the dropdown uh, functionality of application designer or the people code editor. Uh, the Java objects don't give us this because to the people code run the the people code designer a java object is just a generic java object it doesn't know what properties and methods are available but since we have declared these as json object and json array we can take advantage of that nice little type add feature so here we want to add property and the values we want to add are exactly the same and down here this next one in here you know the add property we're inserting apple id uh, this one we're adding an array to the json object so we're going to use add json array same content. And then inside the array, what we're do, doing is iterating over each effective data row, inserting the array content. So let me grab this and we'll choose add element. Nice, it's right at the top. I think we're done. I think that's all it took to convert from the JSON object to the native JSON. That actually was pretty simple, wasn't it? Now, I wanna show you a few more things. So as ext extending the example, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to prepare for that. Let's just use the JSON people code string variable. I declared it earlier. We haven't used it yet. Let's set it now. JSON equals the two string. All right. Save it. Let's test it and see what kind of results we get. I'm going to run this output to log. And here's our log file. Great. Hey, that looks perfect, doesn't it? I mean, just a couple of minor changes to what we were doing with the Java objects, and we're now native. I mean, if I were to take this here in a 
JSON compare tool and compare it to what we see perhaps in this output here. It looks identical, doesn't it? Oh, but wait, maybe that's not such a good thing. See, we're going to be taking this. I mean, let's think of the typical JSON use case. The typical JSON use case is for integration, which means we're taking data and we're sending it over the wire somewhere else. And when you're sending data over the wire, generally speaking, you want to white space compress that data. So really what I want is what we see on the left, but what we're getting is what we see on the right. Now from a JSON structural perspective, it doesn't matter. It works. But uh, for performance efficiency, it might be better to white space and as a best practice, it's better to white space compress, or we might say minify the content going out of PeopleSoft. So let me show you how we can minify this content. So we'll start with something, here, let me comment this out. We'll start with a, an object known as the JSON generator. So local JSON generator njgen equals create, we've got a factory function here, JSON generator. And then the JSON generator will work off of a JSON node. So we'll create local JSON node and, and we'll call this our root equals and uh, oh here, create JSON node. Okay, perfect. So we have our JSON generator, which is going to work off of a node. Now the node needs to have a value. So we're going to set that equal to, here, here's what we do, and root dot set JSON object. And the JSON object is going to be our JSON ample. Here, let me draw this out for you. I think this might make a little bit more sense. So what we're doing is, well, we have our JSON document. And we'll put our JSON document on the left-hand side. So here, let me try to draw a nice little document here. So this would be our JSON. And over here on the other side, we have our generator. So hmm, let's draw that as a box. JGen. And over here, we're going to call to string to get our white space compressed output. But we can't just say, hey, JSON generator, use this JSON document. Instead, we have to say, hey, JSON generator, here's the root node for your generation. And that root node, oh, your content comes from the JSON document. So we're going to create another document here in the middle. It's actually not a document per se, but rather a pointer. So this right here, we'll just call this one node. So the node points back to the JSON document and the JSON generator points to the node, or perhaps maybe the appropriate way to say that is the JSON generator points to the node, which then points back to the document. Okay, so now we need to say node and root. And now we're almost ready to print our output. I'm going to go ahead and put that line in now. JSON equals njgen dot to string. So that will generate the output. But right now, this would create, by default, pretty printed output. So what I'm going to do instead is njgen dot set pretty mode false. <laughs> I mean, have you ever said that before? <laughs> Let me just go into pretty mode equals false. <laughs> you know what they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? So let's see what kind of output we get here when we set the pretty mode to false. So I'm going to go ahead and output to log. And it ran. Wow, that was fast. And oh, you know what? I mean, that's pretty mode equals false, but in my mind, in my eye as the beholder, that is beautiful. White space compressed minified exactly like I wanted. Okay, now back in the code, the I can I can see this section here, and I can see myself using that a lot more. If that's the case, then I might want to think about maybe perhaps creating a function library for this fragment. I have to show you one more quirk before we end, and that is how to set a node to a null value. You see, well, here, here's what I'd like to do. I'm just going to throw another property in here. So how about in JSON ample 
dot add property. And what I want to demonstrate here is how to set a null, a, a JSON property to, or JSON attribute to null. So I'm going to create another property here, and it's, it's just for demonstration purposes. So I don't know, a good name for that might be empty. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to just set it to null, but unfortunately that will fail at runtime. So here, let me show you a trick I learned from my friends Tim Slater and Colton Fisher. Now, we still need the property, we still need this empty property, but I'm going to set that to a zero length string. Now, <laughs> I know a zero length string is not the same thing as null, but stay with me. Okay, next we need to create a JSON node. So local and JSON, oh, so local JSON node, and oh, let's call this one, how about empty node? Empty, or maybe null node, empty node equals, and we're going to grab this from the node that we just created. So, and JSON empl dot get JSON node, the name of our node, empty. And then it's just as simple as an empty node dot set null. That's not so bad, is it? Okay, so here's the quirk. Setting it to null clears the node's name. So we need to reset it. An empty node dot set node name. Empty. That's it. Okay, let's save. And then one last, last test. And here's the output. Perfect. There's our null, white space compressed. This is perfect. Now, I have a couple more JSON topics, but hey, we better save those for another time. But I am curious, what are your experiences with people, tools, and JSON? What are you using to generate, read, and parse JSON? Please share your experiences in the comments section below. We'd all love to read about them. Now, JSON is a critical component of a modern integration strategy. Whether you're talking about REST, data transfer, or even OAuth security tokens, such as the JSON Web Token. We cover all of these topics in our integration tools courses, including our three-day integration tools update course. So be sure to visit our course catalog to see when we're offering these classes next. You can also follow our LinkedIn company page to receive updates whenever we post a live virtual course. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.